Today I'm going to share a 1940s wartime recipe with you. This is Bobble and Squeak. I'm showing you this recipe because it's very cheap to make and it's filling and it can be as nutritious as you want it to be. I'm going to show you two versions of serving it. Firstly, on its own with a plant-based protein and also with a little bit of bacon. In the 1940s during the war meat was heavily rationed and it was actually the last thing to come off ration and it didn't come off ration until 1954. Rations tended to vary depending on supply, what was available and a multitude of other things as well. So a lot of meals didn't contain meat or if they did contain meat it might only be say one rasher chopped up and added to bubble and squeak for example. Firstly to make it go a little bit further, secondly to add a bit of extra flavour and thirdly to add a bit of protein to the meal. Now in addition to the rations they had a point system so adults were entitled to 16 points a month and for that you might get a can of fish which was about four points or a can of meat such as corned beef or otherwise known as bully beef or eight pounds of split peas which of course were dried and you would be able to make them into delicious soups and stews with a few flavours and seasonings whatever you could get hold of at that time. Now I said before that some rations varied for example, an adult would be entitled to one shell egg a week or like a little tin, say, of dried egg, which you could reconstitute with water. It would be one tablespoon of dried egg to two tablespoons of water. The tricky part was not to add any extra of the dried egg because then it would take on an unpleasant flavour. They were used a lot in recipes. If you were a poultry keeper you didn't get any allowance at all off the government and you would be producing eggs mostly to give for the war effort. Everybody was encouraged of course to grow their own fruit and vegetables. We had the Women's Land Army and if you had a little patch of garden or an allotment you were encouraged to grow and it was known as digging for victory. It sounds very propagandist but we're kind of in that situation now with the cost of living where we're again thinking in terms of digging for victory to keep the prices down on our grocery bills which keep going up. So I have here some leftover cabbage. This was a Savoy cabbage that had been in the fridge for a bit longer than I wanted it to be. It was still fine but it was past its best. There's about half a cabbage there. And I have a couple of potatoes. These potatoes I actually put in the microwave in their skins so I'm going to peel these a little bit just in the scraggy bits but I'll leave most of the skin on. Potatoes are more nutritious with the skins and these are nice and soft. Now those potatoes are probably about 30 pence. I got a big bag of potatoes quite cheaply recently from the farm shop and I also have in here some leftover mashed root veg from 
dinner that we had the other day. So there's a little bit of mashed potato in there with mashed carrot, mashed celeriac and mashed parsnip. I will fry off in a separate pan a couple of rashes of bacon. Now this bacon we bought in Dumfries and Galloway back in September, it's been in the freezer, it's Ayrshire bacon. As a non-meat option, I'm going to do some baked beans. These were 50 pence a can, and I'm going to do about half of these beans, so that's 25 pence. So as you can see, for maybe three or four people, we have a really, really, really cheap meal that will be filling. So let's get started. I have a pan here, I've put a little bit of oil in. Now, during the war, you would have a little bit of fat, maybe two ounces of fat. It could be more or it could be less, but people often collected their own dripping as well from whatever meat they had. If you were the only one in the household, you can imagine you would do very poorly indeed for meat. So the more of you that were in the household who were adults, then the better you would probably be able to feed if you were a canny cook. Now they also had, it was three pints of milk a week, but dried milk was available and it was used in a lot of recipes not just for drinks but also for puddings savory dishes as well and we might think of it as say marvel milk or shop own skim milk but in those days it was called household milk because it was kept in the household for when you ran out of milk. I still call it household milk, believe it or not. It will take a while because we want the bubble and squeak to be really nice and crispy. The bubble would be the potatoes and the squeak would be the cabbage. But you can use other vegetables as well. You can even use roasties as well if you've got anything left from your Sunday dinner. Any scraps of cooked vegetables are great as part of a bubble and squeak. cabbage, just hear that sizzle, and lastly, the lovely mashed veggies. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Stir it all together really well. through and we'll leave that to cook away for about 15 minutes or so turning it occasionally the bubble is starting to brown and while that's doing I'm going to fry the bacon gently one rasher will be going on a plate and the other can, when it's cold, go in the fridge and be used in another recipe. We're going to go sparingly with this as you would during the war years. We'll probably eat all this bubble because we're not having bread with it. Now, during the war they had national bread you got a small loaf every week and that was 
a wholemeal type bread. Everyone was entitled to a national loaf. So normally you might, this would probably serve maybe three people. We're going to be greedy and have it between the two of us. Because this is all we're having until tomorrow morning. And we're hungry. We went out today to deal to the farm shop and had a wander. Went to the butchers and we had a good walk to and from the car because we couldn't find any parking in the town and had to park further along the seawall where the parking is still free. We managed to find some on street parking which is very handy but it was quite a walk into the town centre getting nice and brown underneath look see how nice and crispy it's getting it smells amazing as well you don't want it too salty especially for the person who's having bacon down. And there's also salt in the baked beans as well. It smells amazing now, really, really good. And the onions are softening nicely as well. I always love to add a bit of onion to a bubble and squeak. I actually eat bubble and squeak quite often. If Dan is off tuning in London and stays overnight with his mum, I often have bubble and squeak for my supper, sometimes with a fried egg. But as I'm recreating a 1940s dish, when eggs were very much on ration, I'm not doing eggs. I suppose during the war they wouldn't have had anything like sunflower oil, they'd just use dripping. I can still remember though, as a girl in the 70s, my nan eating bread and dripping. My gran, she was brought up in a Roman Catholic orphanage for girls and quite often on a Sunday for supper all they would have was bread and dripping. People were not fat in the 1940s. Most people were underweight. Very few people were overweight because you couldn't get a lot of things including sugar. Sugar came off ration in 1953. So many things were on ration and the quantities changed such a lot as well. The times could be quite hard, it just depended on what stage the country was at. So the bacon's almost ready. I'm going to take that off the heat now. And the bubble and squeak is also nice and crispy underneath. That I'm going to serve up in a minute. Now, one modern concession, they wouldn't have had a microwave in the 1940s. They would have cooked the beans on the stove top in a pan. My little pan is in the dishwasher. Another thing that you wouldn't have had in the 1940s. So I'm making a concession and using the modern technology that we have available to heat the baked beans. I'll give them a minute and then another 30 seconds and they should be nice and hot. Say when, Dan. Oh, when? See, it's all nice and crispy. Look at that, that looks incredible. Not worth keeping the last bit.
so there it is my bubble and squeak one with bacon and the other with beans super cheap and filling and nutritious